Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Monday, April 8, 2024. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on that docket today? We're going to go through a lot of stuff today. First, we'll start with today, which is a narrow ranging day. What does that mean? It means the market didn't do anything. They're waiting on something. What could they be waiting on? Well, today, everybody knows by now we had a full solar eclipse and therefore we can get a shift. And what is the shift in? I'm going to go into that in a moment. Hold your horses. We can get a shift in whether it's market direction, whether it's sentiment, whether it's something else that impacts the market. It's a time, it's a time zone. There's an orb of the time zone. Doesn't have to happen today. Could happen Tuesday, Wednesday, in that neighborhood. All of a sudden, if you find the market trending very strongly in one direction or another, we can certainly attribute it to, at least in concept, the fact that we had a zero in on. We, I was in on today's date for some kind of a turning event, some kind of an acceleration event, some kind of a high or low event. It's not, and I don't want you to get the wrong impression, it's tinfoil hat event, that's all in jest, that's all in fun. The reality is, it's not an event that directly impacts the market. What it is, is an event that directly impacts one thing or another, it's a shift, we call it a new when one thing ends another thing begins you can look at this as a seasonality change as a timing change as an earth rotational with the sun change is it going to change the heaven and the oceans and the earth and all that stuff i'll leave that to you to decipher all i know from a market analyst perspective i pay attention to these type of events, these lunar events, solar eclipses, all kinds of different events like that, that can and often do have a shift in markets, a high, a low, an acceleration point. So we're on the lookout. Let's go farther. Yes, we had a narrow ranging day today. However, we're waiting on fill in the blank. We're waiting on CPI. We're waiting on PPI. We're waiting on ABC, XYZ, whatever alphabet soup they want it to be. We're waiting on inflation data this week. We're going to have some Fed speakers giving various speeches and or comments all across the board this week. We have it almost every week. Don't pay attention to that. Some will be hawkish, some will be dovish, they will cancel each other out, and it gives the pundits, the talking heads, an excuse if the market's moving in one direction or another and they need to assign a reason, they'll just pull a Fed speaker out of their hat. Let's get directly into the tape. So last Thursday, we had a reversal day. What did they do so far between Friday and today? What they did was they retraced about half. Give or take, it's an about situation. They retraced about half of the move of the total of the breakdown candle, the range, the daily range of that breakdown candle from Thursday. They've retraced about half. Here's what we do know. A, the trend line's important. Why did they stop there Thursday? Because that's where the trend line was. If you're not familiar with where this trend line comes from, it comes from a long time ago. This is a weekly chart. Go to the monthly chart and you'll see. This is the high from 2022 and this is the high from January or pardon me, March of the year 2000. This is the tech bubble, the dot-com high. And you see the market got above that trend line and when you go back to a shorter time frame, you can see that on the daily chart Thursday, they came back in to run a test of said trend line. The bull case is above the trend line, she's bullish. She's going to make new highs if she stays above the trend line. And here's what you can take to the bank. Closing daily above, one time good, two times great. Closing daily above 523.87, this breakdown candle high. 
that promotes another leg higher. The same energy that would normally produce a move lower off a reversal candle like that will produce similar energy, but yet in the northern direction, in this case, the northbound lane. Write that stuff down, put it on a sticky note. Weekly chart, as long as she stays above the trend line, she's bullish, building energy for another leg higher. Is there anything wrong with this chart from a technical perspective? Is there anything wrong with the bullishness, the uptrendness of this chart? And the answer is no. The only thing of caution, it's like a cautionary flag, is there a little bit extended from home base? However, home base being the 20 period moving average, will creep up if she goes sideways. Sideways is a corrective move. Time is more important than price. Moving sideways is considered a corrective move, whether it be a bull correction or a bear correction, a la bull flag pattern, bear flag pattern, bull wedge pattern, bear wedge pattern, a la correcting in both price and time. More sticky note material. Anybody make money today in the live trading room? How about inside the numbers? I'm going to point out a couple of important things throughout the commentary. But once again, what I urge you to do is pause the video. Take the time to read the notes. Go back and double check what's being said here in real time and before the opening bell. The morning schematic as the market's moving, it's unfolding. Where's resistance? Where's support? All that is put in the notes in the commentary, in real time or before? Is this something that you can utilize in your trading each and every day? You make that decision. Let's note a couple of things at the Zero Dark 30 commentary. This is at, let's say, 6.30 in the morning, 5.18.15. Put that on a sticky note real quick. Here's another one, 5.19.25. We had a bull pivot. We had a bear pivot. Above one is bullish, below the other is bearish. But wait, there's more. Again, pause the video as I scroll, read the notes, go back to the chart, and double check the work. Markets open, 9.37, let's cut right to the chase. 5.18.15 down to 5.17 is a zone of support for a bounce back in the other direction. 5.18.15 is the bear pivot. Those of you that have been around a while in the live room know that they're going to test a pivot. Whether it be a bull pivot, a bear pivot, or just a garden variety pivot, they're going to run a test at a pivot. How often do they get a bounce off the pivot? Very often. We think better in pictures. Here's the SPY five-minute chart. Right of the vertical line is today's activity. The horizontal lines represent the bull pivot and the bear pivot. 518.15, 519.25. So already you can see there's something here, definitely a 518.15. So here's what happened. Right out of the chute, market goes up, runs a test of the bull pivot, gets immediately rejected, does what? Comes down to the bear pivot, gets a bounce back in the other direction. This is a base hit with potential. We had a plethora, and I love that word plethora, a bucket full. Just oodles of traders in the live room took that trade at 518.15, took the ride, booked the base hit, held the trailer, and got a whopper, a stand-up double, a whopper junior, whatever you want to call it, because they never gave us a reason to sell the remaining portion of the position. We talked about it ad nauseum in the live room during the morning session while we were in the trade. 518.15 down to 517 is a zone of support for a bounce back in the other direction. 518.15 is your bull pivot. Read the notes, go back to the chart, and double check the work. It's all in here. Everything a trader needs to be successful using the charts and my numbers each and every day. 519.25 is still the bull pivot. Above on candle closes, opens the door for 520 up to 520.65. 520, as you can see, was overhead resistance. It's a big fat round number. In the live room, we were, I was willing to short the market a little bit higher. They didn't get there. They were rejected at the big fat round number of 520. But for us, that was a target above 519 and a quarter. That means exits for the long trade for the stand up double, triple, whopper, junior, whatever you want to call it. How do you like them apples? 
pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. It's all in here. Everything you need if you're an S&P trader, ES, options, MES, ETFs, SPY itself, options on the SPX, options on futures, whatever your fancy is, we have the S&P numbers. Plus, we have stocks on the move, which reminds me of something else. Earnings season's getting kicked off later this week. The banks kick it off, and then we get a bonanza for the next, let's just say, six or seven weeks, give or take. This morning, we only had two on the board, SWKS and United Airlines, UAL, SWKS, Skyworks, hit its entry objective. The other one did not, so it's off the table. We'll take a look at the chart of Skyworks. The number you just saw in Skyworks was 102.82. The market opened on that number. Low of day was 102.82 on the button. Had a rocket ride away from there. So this one was in the camp of, that's not really fair. They didn't really trade any shares other than a few at 102.82. Nobody could get filled down there and they just took off. That's the way the cookie crumbles in market terms. In my terms, the numbers work. Not everything is a tradable opportunity. They don't let you get into everything. This is the concept of we had the number. They did what they did at the open. They basically didn't let you have the trade. But nonetheless, the area, the concept, the number was right. What's going on over in Camp IWM? A little bit of relative strength today against the S&P. IWM was up about half a percent today, a little over a buck. This is an uptrend. You've got... Higher lows, and it's very easy to understand. This is higher lows. You go over to a weekly chart, and there'll be some people out there, traders, analysts, whoever, that want to call this a rising wedge or whatever they want to call it. That's fine. I have a target of 216 above the recent high. We don't need to know anything other than that. Unless they're below 200 bucks, below 200 bucks is the Irene type of situation. What is Irene type of situation? Irene is where the floodgates can open up. The selling can accelerate. If they get below, close candles below 200, a little bit below that. 199.65 is the number. That's the Irene number today for now in the IWM. That's the number that will change the character of this chart. Closing below, staying below. Not running a test of closing below, staying below. Write that down, put it on a sticky note. What about the folks down at the transportation department? Judge's crew. They were flat today. Spiders were flat-ish. They were flat-ish. Above all the moving averages, trend is your friend. Here's what we can say. We can take this daily chart, look above the moving average, and say they're eating time off the clock in a chop shop formation, staying above the moving average, and continuing to eat time off the clock, is building energy to make another move higher. Sound familiar? Yeah, it does. Where does that come from? Well, guess what? If you go to the weekly chart, you got a similar box and a similar situation above the moving averages. She's eating time off the clock to challenge the highs right up here. Nothing more, nothing less, until something changes. Where is something going to change? Where can it change? Well, below this blue line for starters. So as long as they're nowhere near there, we're looking at this box. It's a bullish box. I know a lot of the things that I do, a lot of the ways I look at the market are unorthodox, but that's the thing that's catapulted me into understanding how this market really works is looking for things and looking at things a certain way that most people just can't see, won't see, don't want to see, aren't interested in. That's where the money is. The money is not in Joe's indicator shop on all these indicators that everybody has access to and nobody could ever prove how to trade them or do they work and how much. Don't fall prey to Joe's indicator shop. What about the cues? Similar to the spiders, we have a reversal candle from last Thursday, Above all the moving averages or at least above the 50, 100, and 200, she's bullish. Hovering around the 20-period moving average isn't bullish or bearish. Above all of them is bullish. Above three out of four is still kind of bullish-ish-ish. Again, this is not exact science. There's part art form to this business. This is the reversal candle. 
She climbed halfway home. Above on candle closes or just pushing above? That's the bull case for another leg higher. Where's this leg higher go to? Well, it gets into the 450s and higher neighborhood. What if she just eats time off the clock here after making the reversal candle? Whether it's the spider's cues, both, it doesn't matter. It's the same situation. Well, she could be building energy for the next move lower. Got a lot of stuff on the docket this week. We got alphabet soup, CPI, PPI, the inflation data, all that stuff. And here we are in the midst, in the throes of a tinfoil hat event. We get to see all this happen in real time. We'll see what's going to happen, if anything's going to happen. XLF has a Thursday reversal candle. We'll default for now too, as long as they're below that reversal candle, but above the 20 period moving average and yet all the moving averages. She's really bullish. But the most bullish she can be is getting above the high of the reversal candle, which basically puts her at these highs here in an uptrend. Trend is your friend. Nothing wrong with the financials. If nothing's wrong with the financials, guess what? There's nothing wrong with the structure and makeup of the overall market. Smash Mouth looks a little bit different because we have our tail candle on the weekly chart. After the move down, she's putting in a bearish, flaggish, consolidation-ish kind of pattern or or do we just by happenstance this is why you have to be the umpire calling balls and strikes or by happenstance did she just pop her head above couldn't break out and this is really just a bullish consolidating flaggish eating time off the clock situation building energy for another move higher on a tail candle there's a rejection coming is this a rejection, a test back of the most recent breakout area? We talked about it at the time. That's this candle hitting 213.35. You all remember that. We had traders in the live room take that trade. We had traders that aren't even a member that just watch these videos take that trade. We talked about this area. We talked about the reasons why. Worked like a charm. Now, here's another situation. That situation's over. Here's a different situation. Is this a move up off the low? consolidating for another move up or is this a move down off the high consolidating for another move down or both of them just nonsense and this is just eating time off the clock around the highs in an uptrend building energy to continue moving higher i'm not trying to talk out of three sides of my mouth i'm trying to tell you that all three are possible and you have to be you must be the umpire looking at all the possibilities that's the way you become a successful analyst, a successful trader, success in this business. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.